So today I'm going to show you how to make this pendant here. Um, it's a really simple design, easy to recreate um, and a lot of fun. And it's also quite quite an easy beginner's piece. So if you haven't done any wire work before, this is a good way to start to get a feel for your wire. All right, so I'm just going to show you first what we are going to use material wise for this piece. So you have your 0.8 wire. This is uh, the wire used for your um, winding the structural designs. And then you've got your 0.4, which is what we're going to be using to attach the um, the faceted rondelles that we have here. These are, I think, four millimeter rondelles. Uh, you can use any size really, um, but the four mils lend themselves quite nicely because um, they fit quite well in between the different sections and they're quite effective as well. So just showing you that from the back and then obviously you've got your cab this design can be used with any sort of shape um, you can just adapt it to um, to whatever shape you have so these are the materials um, so the tools that you're going to need for that just going to set this aside for now the tools you're going to be needing for this um, is just a pair of pliers some cutters and if you have them available uh, your bail making pliers um, this is not an essential for this you can use actually any type of tool that you know has the same sort of size this is roughly about a one centimeter wide bail so anything that you have um, will work as well um, yeah all right so let's get started so I'm going to shift these out of the way and to make this design so you're going to take your stone here I've got a navette shape um, you can use as I said you can use a pear you can use a, an oval um, you can use a cushion cut anything you like it works um, and to do this design we're going to take our 0.8 wire and I'm going to cut roughly about a meter and a half Depending on the size of the stone, you're just going to have to measure it out. The longer, the better. And these reels of wire, you get plenty of wire on them. So you can actually uh, just make sure that you've got enough. So go longer rather than shorter because um, it's not nice to run out of wire in the end. So I'm going to take my meat and a half wire and I'm going to bend it in half. Like so. I'm going to shift this aside. And for that, I'm going to bring in my pair of pliers and squidge this down this is just to create the beginning like so and this is the starting point of the design and then what I do is um, fold this over like that and I'm just giving this a little bit of a bend just to give it a starting point and this is what it would look like all right so then the next step is to take your stone and place it at the bottom of the stone and then all it is with the remainder of the wire is your twirl and you try and keep the two wires next to each other and then go around the back give it a twirl here So just try and keep hold of the wires as you work. Give it another twirl at the back. And the more you capture it, the better. So bring it around the front. Just bring it down the bottom and then just give it another twirl. The more of these twirls you make and you kind of wrap the wire around the stone, trying to keep these wires parallel so that it looks neat and tidy you could have them overlap but obviously it looks nicer if they are parallel so I've gone a little bit shorter with the wire here because it wouldn't have fit in my light box here so uh, this is just to demonstrate to you the pattern so you can then later adjust it to make sure it fits the stone bring it round again and give it another twist so if you had a longer piece of wire, so this is basically what it would look like twisted and this holds the stone in place. So now I have um, made up another piece here which has got a longer, longer bail, um, bail wire, which is this here. So obviously if you have long enough of a length, this is what it would look like. So this is an oval. Just going to show you so you can see it's still quite loose um, because it's obviously just twisted wire around the cab. 
So then when you come to the top, you kind of twist it around the top, whether it's an oval or a navette or whatever shape you have, you just bring it out to the top and make sure that it, it looks like that. So now what you could do if you wanted to, you could use the point four and actually weave a bell in between with a figure of eight. Or you could do it like I've done in this design here and keep it open. Um, and for that, you will need your bell making pliers, which are these. And first I'm going to come in with my normal pair of pliers and bend these forward a slight bit and press this down. And then I'm bringing my bell making pliers and placing these roughly above. And I am bringing these wires around and it's a little bit fiddly at this stage. Bring these around the top and the same on the other side so that they line up. And then keep hold of it and just wind these wires around once and then do the same with the other side wind it around once gently and this kind of attaches the bell to the top so obviously take your time when you're doing this and you can then come and open up the section here so what you could either do with the wires that are left over you can then carry on and perhaps wind them around a little bit more and then you can also use these wires to recreate some more swirls at the back um, and work the design further um, I've just decided to trim mine off so I'm going to do the same here and this is what you need your your cutters for so set this aside so you can see that the bell is still quite loose at the top now so the next step is to bring in your point four so i'm going to set these tools aside and bring in my point four now you don't need a huge length of that because um it's just a little bit of adding in seat bits so i would say you can probably go around about a meter or so off your point four and we're just going to be attaching this to the top so what I'm going to do is have half and half so I'm taking half of my point four and I'm winding it around the top of the bell like so and I'm going to bring in some of these point and the four male faster rondelles so we're going to use quite a few depending where you want to place them and um, so I'm going to pick up the first one and feed it onto the point four and then we're going to use the point four to attach to the um the next wire in line <clears throat> the point eight that's below so what this does it will give the whole design a little bit more structure like so And then go around it one more time. And this attaches the bell to the wire below and gives it a little bit more strength. So the next step is bring in some more of your faceted rondelles and then just gauge the gap between the wire you've just attached the wire to and then the next one so depending where you want it to go i think i'm going to go right below so i need a few more of my faceted beads i'm going to bring this in so that's one and then two feed these on i'm going to gauge so i'm going to pull this down i want this to be nice and tight at the top so i'm going to gauge roughly how many I need so I'm only probably going to need three so I'm going to release the fourth one put it aside and I'm using the point four to go around the section here
I'm going to try and pull this nice and tight so it doesn't shift. So this will pull down the actual bale onto the stone itself. So I'm going to do one more section here to make sure it's nice and tight. And I think the next one will require about three or four again. So it's one, two, There we go. And I'm going to go around these wires here. And then again, just pull it nice and tight. And this kind of creates a nice structure for the design itself. And it also gives you a nice visual impact with the faceted stones. That's why I quite like micro facets for this purpose because they lend so much detail to a piece. I'm going to bring this round here. So just pull that tight. So obviously you would just keep on doing this until you have enough of the seat beads or the micro facets in place to um, have a nice tight fit like this one here. So now exactly the same would occur with the back. You obviously want to make sure that the uh, micro facets get attached to U.4 here and that's why I actually went for the same length on the back so that you can recreate the same pattern that you have done at the front at the back and you would just work your way down obviously you just ensure that this looks a little bit neat more neat and tidy than this section here um, but um, this is basically how you would do the design um, and obviously you can put your very own spin on it, you can use different color wire, you can add different uh, shapes, you can add um, you know, different color wires all together in the piece. Um, and this is how this is made. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'm looking forward to see your finished pieces.